Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, today is the 14th of April. Uh, for today's class, uh, because it's a very very short chapter and it's a very simple chapter, I hope you can just watch this video which I'm doing for you. And uh, for for today's class, you are asked to just to watch this video, and I'll put this video on my uh, YouTube channel and uh, once you have uh, watched it please comment at the comment section and also if you have any questions please just write in your questions at the comment section and I'll answer them as soon as possible so I need all of you to watch it and uh, comment and like or share this video to uh, anyone else all right so today we are going to do chapter 2 uh, we have completed chapter 1, uh, 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. Uh, for today's lecture, we are going to start with chapter 2. Uh, just before that, let's just recap what have we done so far in chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1 was the very uh, introduction of operating system. We have understood what is uh, the definition of operating system, what can the operating system do, what can't it do, we have also come across the word kernel. We have also come across the word micro. Uh, uh, we have also come across the word of um, application software. So these are the terms that you need to uh, understand and focus on in chapter one. And also, you also need to understand what are the functions of operating system. This is very important. Uh, because these uh, questions will be asked sometime during your quiz or your test. In chapter 2, for the introduction, uh, we are going to learn about user interface. Okay, So as you know, the user interface of any operating system at the moment, and I'm sure all of you are uh, familiar, is graphical user interface, or in short, it's called GUI. So what does that mean? It means the operating system uses a GUI, a nice GUI for users like us to use the operating system. So even if you change an operating system, you were able, able to know how to click or what to do in when you see in a new uh, user interface, a uh, graphical user interface, simply because you know what to click and all is that is, is written and so on and so forth but in in general we need to understand what is a user interface and what type of user interface are available uh, in operating system so the basic definition of a uh, user interface is a program or sets of program that sits as a layer above the operating system itself to create computational structures and access the resources. Sometimes the program is known as shell, provides a mechanism for user to communicate with the operating system and request operating system services. Okay, so point number one, it's a program by itself, okay, or a set of programs. So these two examples which I show you here, these are examples of uh, what you say, uh, uh, what you say of types of or examples of uh, operating system. Each of these icons here is related to a program. So the icon here is merely uh, a picture which sits above the program or above the computer uh, OS layer. So once you double click on them, it opens up a specific program. Okay, so user interface is what the user sees and in order for the user to access that particular program he or she just need to double click on the graphic okay so this is basically how the user interface overall uh, sits okay so you have the uh, system calls what are system calls system calls are specific functions only the operating system can do okay and it has uh, a few types of function here services Okay, uh, program execution, input output execution, file system, communication, uh, resource allocation, and accounting. So, once you double click on a specific, uh, once you're in the user interface, uh, 
design you double click on a certain uh, uh, icon automatically it open it calls a specific system call and it opens one of these services one of these services once these services are open it directs these services to the uh, hardware I mean, it, it now opens in the input output screen or it, it opens in the monitor or maybe you want to access the printer and so on and so forth okay so these are examples of there are two types of user interface design okay two types of user interface uh, sorry interface design one is the gui graphical user interface another one is called command line interface the major difference between both is graphical user interface uses graphics and the uh, uh, what do you say the command line uses command line meaning you have to understand uh, you have to know the syntax only then it activates for example what do i mean let's say you want to open up microsoft word okay uh, in a graphical user interface, you double click on the icon and the Microsoft Word opens. But in a command line interface, you have to type in the command, a specific command, only then it appears. Okay? So in a command line interface, this is basically the syntax. You need to know the syntax. If the syntax is not right, then the program will not be initiated. Unlike a command, uh, unlike a graphical user interface, you just double click. You do not need to know any command. It's just me merely finding the right icon and clicking on it. But in a command line interface, you need to know the specific syntax. Only then it, uh, what do you say, uh, the program will run. Okay. Uh, in Microsoft Word, in my sorry, in Windows operating system. This command line interface is known as the MS-DOS. However, in Unix, it's known as C shell or Bash or, uh, or shell. Okay, so this is the example I'll show you next. So these are the uh, normal examples or the simple examples that we use in uh, command line interface. So these commands will do a specific thing. DIR, copy, move, or erase type mkdir rk rm dir okay so these are the specific commands that you need to know if you are running on a command line interface so a command line interface is basically there is no uh, there is no graphical user interface so the users need to know specific commands only then you can use this uh, only then you can use the specific program let's go for a first example of dir okay so dir i've made an example here so this is in your, in your command prompt how do you go in into your command prompt you just simply type cmd on your start button you just go to your start button you type in cmd and it opens up this black screen here so you type in this command dir so what appears is you get the directory of C. Okay, so these are the files. But it is the same thing in a graphical user interface. You see the folder here, APPS, APPS, Dell, Dell, Drivers, Drivers, Intel, Intel, uh, Performance Log, Performance Log, Program Files, Program Files x68 x68 users and windows users and windows so in the graphical user interface as you can see here it's all nicely uh, what the the icons are all nicely uh, stored here as for the graphical user interface you see it in a black screen and you have to type in here you don't need to you just click on see and you can see the uh, folders all here uh, in a uh, graphical user interface, it, uh, these are called folders. But in a command line interface, these are called directories. So DIR stands for directory. Okay, remember that? DIR stands for directory. Okay, so a command line provides a mechanism to combine sequence of commands together. 
these sudo programs are known as scripts or batch files. So you can have several types of command. Example, eh? okay, example. Okay, example, you can have VIR, you can have a few commands and you can put them together in what is called as a batch file. So what is a batch file? A batch file is a combination of commands that do a certain command. Uh, combination of a certain command, of a few, uh, a few uh, combination of sequence of command that you, are, you put together to do a special thing. Example, let's say we want to find out the number of uh, folders available in our system. And from that, we want to know, we want to open a specific uh, folder. So you can write a command using DIR or MKDIR or so on and so forth and save it together in what is called as a batch file. Batch file, kalau you not save, is .bat. Okay, you do a, there's a specific command and you do that and automatically you can run it all together. So uh, what I'm trying to say is a batch file is a combination of files. Okay, sorry, of, of a series or combination of a series of command line interface uh, instructions. Okay, for example, if you are using in, let's say you're using uh, GUI, let's say you want to create uh, a new folder in my documents in a folder called my documents what do you do first you go into my document and then you right click and then uh, the the document appears okay uh, the new folder appears however in a command line interface you can just type in one command and automatically it goes into my document and the new folder is ready for you okay so this uh, one line command is called a batch all right, let's go into the next slide. Okay, so uh, what is a batch file? It's a kind of script. Okay, it's a kind of script in either DOS, OS2 or Windows. Okay, yes, we have a batch file uh, in, in Windows. Okay, a batch file is an unformatted text file that contains one or more commands and has a .bac or .cmd file name extension. So it has some uh, file name extension. So when you run this file, particular file, automatically you will do something. Okay. So this is an example of a DOS batch file. Okay, a DOS batch file. You can try this. Uh, pause this video later on. Type this command on a notepad. Okay. Type this command on a notepad exactly, and run and save it as uh, testing dot bat okay so when you open your notepad okay when you open your notepad type in this command and then save as okay save as testing.bat and then just go back and look at this file and double click and see what happens okay you'll be you'll find it uh, quite interesting okay but sometimes it might be an error lah. Uh, but just make sure that uh, you type it exactly because this file is not like uh, this batch file is not like C or C++ or Java because you can uh, you can first compile it and then if there's any errors you repair you repair the errors only then you start running the program but for a DOS batch file or batch file there is no compilation the compilation and the running of the program happens at one time so there might be an error you can never know the error until you run the program. Okay, uh, this is the same example, but using a uh, different operating system. It's using the Unix operating system. Okay, now let's go into graphical user interface. I'm sure all of you are familiar. It's mouse-driven, icon-driven Windows graphical objects uh, are allocated to, to the use of a particular program or process contains a title bar, menu bar, and widget, sometimes called an object-oriented interface or, or <coughs> an icon-based interface. Okay, so basically what it's trying to say is the graphical user interface is icon-based, so you double-click on it and certain things happen, and each icon is associated with a particular program or a process. Why is it a process? Why not, why only a, uh, why not a program? Yes, 
For example, if you want to uh, do a, a virus scan, you click on the particular icon and automatically the program runs. Automatically the process runs. Okay, a program, let's say you double click on Microsoft Word and then it becomes a program. Okay, so there are, there are two different, uh, uh, there, there are two different types of using it. Two different ways of using a graphical user interface. Example of a graphical user interface, I've taken an old uh, operating system, Windows XP. So this is how it looks like. As you can see, it's almost similar to what you have now. Uh, but yeah, it's different uh, in many ways, but it's also similar uh, in, in the graphical user interface, simply because if you need to open anything, you just double click on it and everything appears. You have the start button here. You still have the start button in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Uh, the same thing, the same graphical user interface with uh, what we call this Linux operating system. Uh, almost the same. But yep, the interface looks a bit different, but I'm sure that if you look at it at the first time, you will know what to do. Okay, basically you because you are you are you know you are familiarized with the graphical user interface. So basically any user will be uh, will be uh, much I mean you'll be much uh, comfortable in changing to a different type of uh, interface. Okay, same goes to as your phone. Once you start using Android. Forever, you will know how to use Android because you know what to do, what to click, how to click, where to click. And once, if you move to iOS, I'm sure you will have a problem in the beginning. But again, uh, it's graphical user interface. So you can read and you will know what to click and how to click on it. Okay, so uh, this is another example, graphical user interface in the Mac PC. Okay, uh, almost similar. Okay, all has the icons. So... Uh, as you can see here, you just double click. Let's say you want to see your calendar, you want to see a Google Map, you want to send messages, you want to FaceTime. Okay, so you just double click on it. However, they don't have Chrome. Uh, what do you say? Uh, browser. They use Safari browser. So maybe that's the only difference. I mean, that's the difference. Uh, one of the difference. But basically, if you were to use this uh, interface, I'm sure all of you would have no problem using it because it's all graphics and you can read it and it tells you what is the graphic all about okay so these are the benefits and uh, uh, the benefits of using or disbenefits of using uh, one type of interface example okay so it, it has categorized the benefits uh, by ease of use control multitasking Okay, so if you are looking for month, uh, for ease of use, then obviously graphical user interface is the most easiest. But if you are looking for uh, control or things like that, yes, graphical user interface will have, but multitasking command line will be a much more better uh, use. All right, in terms of appearance, obviously graphical user interface has a better appearance. Uh, in terms of speed, well, uh, yes, GS command line is much more faster because you, you can type in uh, into a batch system and automatically things will happen. Alright, these are the uh, additional two more functions. So you just read this on your own to find out uh, which is better. Okay, so this, uh, the, the comparison between graphical user interface and command line interface is a common question that will be asked in your test or exam. So basically, what we have done in this uh, video is we have started an uh, explanation about uh, the interface that uh, operating system provides. So basically, there are two types of interface that you need to know. One is the command line interface. Another one is the GUI graphical user interface. Each of these user interfaces has their own advantage and disadvantage. Although graphical user uh, graphical uh, user interface has a better as a higher uh, advantage but uh, command line interface also has a, uh, a better advantage in certain points okay and we have also understood what is basically an interface okay what can it do uh, what is a command line okay and we have also understood we have also seen some examples of a command uh, line okay so I hope you uh, will go through this video uh, I'll open this video sharp at uh, 11 
and uh, hopefully you will uh, see it and please comment and like and uh, if you have any questions please comment down below all right thank you so much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh